Alright, number 12 is E, 15 G, 18 D. 21, my new and out table would multiply Y by a fourth and subtract 2, so there it is. For 24, my new and out table would multiply Y by 2 and add 4. For 27, I had to put it in vertex form first, and there's my work on how I did that. So what I did was take away 2 from X and take away 2 from Y. Here is my vertex form on that one, a little bit more work. And I had to take away 1 from X, multiply 3Y, and then take away 3 from Y. This one also had a little bit more work on 33. I had to take away 1 from X and multiply Y by half and then negative 1 and a half. For 36, there is my vertex form. And so I got a vertex at 2, negative 4, an axis of symmetry at x equals 2. It opens up a y-intercept of 0, 0, an x-intercept of 0, 0, and 4, 0, a domain of negative infinity to infinity, a range of negative 4 to infinity with a bracket, increasing from 2 to infinity, and decreasing from negative infinity to 2. For 39, we have a vertex at 2, negative 8, axis of symmetry at x equals 2. It opens up a y-intercept of 0, 0, x-intercept of 0, 0, and 4, 0. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range is negative 8 to infinity with a bracket. We're increasing from 2 to infinity and negative infinity to 2. 42, we have a vertex at 1, negative 4. We have an axis of symmetry at x equals 1. It opens up. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative 3, an x-intercept at 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. Domain of negative infinity to infinity. Range of negative 4 to infinity with a bracket. Increasing from 1 to infinity. Decreasing from negative infinity to 1. 45, we got a vertex at a fourth and then 1 and 7 eighths. Our axis of symmetry is x equal to fourth. It opens up. Our y-intercept is 0, 2. Our x-intercept, there is none. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range is 1 and 7 eighths to infinity with a bracket. Increasing from a fourth to infinity and decreasing from negative infinity to a fourth. For 48, we have a vertex at a half and negative 1 and 1 fourth. Our axis of symmetry is x equals a half. It opens down. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. There are no x-intercepts. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range is negative infinity to negative 1 and a fourth of the bracket. We're increasing from negative infinity to a half and decreasing from a half to infinity. For 51, we had to do a little bit more work to get to vertex form, but our vertex is negative 3 fourths and then 4 and a fourth. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3 fourths. We open down. Our y-intercept is 0, 2. Our x-intercept is 0 0.280 and negative 1.780. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range is negative infinity to four and a quarter. We're increasing from negative infinity to negative three-fourths and decreasing from negative three-fourths to infinity. Everything on there was worth one point if you um, got it right. So, all right. The next part of the chapter is dealing with polynomials. So we're going to go a little bit away from quadratics and we're going to deal with some polynomial functions. A polynomial function is a function given in one variable. So that means it's y equals, and then it has x on the other side. It is, the degree of a polynomial is the largest power of x that appears. So if it's quadratic, it's going to be x squared. If it's cubic, x cubed, and that will be your largest exponent. There are no fractional exponents, because that would not be a polynomial. And x cannot be in the denominator. That would make it a rational function. So. We are going to determine if these functions are polynomial ones. If they are, we have to tell the degree, and if they aren't, we have to say why not. So on this first one, let's go through and make sure they all just have one letter on the right side. So this is 4x plus x cubed, so we're good. This is x to the 3 halves minus x squared plus 2, so it's good. This one is x squared minus 5 over x cubed, so they're all good. So then you have to decide, okay, does this have a fractional exponent? 4x plus x cubed does not. x to the 3 halves minus x squared plus 2 does. So this is not a polynomial function because it has a fractional exponent. All right, so the bottom one, we have x squared minus 5 over x cubed. So that does not have a fractional exponent, so we're okay there. 
So then you gotta look for when x is in the denominator. This doesn't have a denominator, so it's good. This does, and x is down there, so it is bad. So it's bad because x was in denominator. The top one doesn't have anything wrong with it, so yay, it is a function, or a polynomial function, excuse me, and its degree is the highest exponent, so cube. All right, so we want to make in-out tables for x to the fourth and x to the fifth. The reason we're going to do these is because we're doing transformations. These in-out tables need to be in your notes. If they are not in your notes, you will not be getting credit. So if we do negative 2 to the fourth power, you get 16. Negative 1 to the fourth is 1. 0 to the fourth is 0. 1 to the fourth is 1. 2 to the fourth is 16. So if we do negative 2 to the fifth, that's that one. Negative 2 to the fifth, we get negative 32. Negative 1 to the fifth, negative 1. 0 to the fifth, 0. 1 to the fifth, 1. And 2 to the fifth, 32. And you're done. So let's do some transformation for those. So you have to pick if it's the x to the fourth one or the x to the fifth. Well, this is x to the fifth. So we're going to copy down that x to the fifth table that we just wrote down. And from there, you get to do transformations. So you have to decide, does it change x or y? So that 3 out in front, you should say, changes the y value by multiplying it by 3. So x is going to stay the same. So if I multiply this by 3, I get negative 96, negative 3, 0, 3, and 96. Yay, go you. Alright, decide which one that belongs to, x to the 4th or x to the 5th. You should have said x to the 4th. So while I am writing that one, pause the video and go ahead and see if you can do the transformation on your own. All right, hopefully you've unpaused the video and you said you're going to take away 2 from x and take away 3 from y. By taking away 2 from x, you get negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And by taking away 3, you get 13, negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, 13. And you're done. All right, so we got that stuff in the back. So now what we're going to do, and this is usually a most missed thing on test, don't make it a most missed thing on test, is writing a polynomial function if those are our zeros. Well, if negative 2 was a 0, what would, be, what would it have looked like in factored form? So x equals negative 2 was one of our answers. So in factored form, it would have looked like x plus 2. So we're going to go x plus 2. And for this one, when x equals 2, we're going to go x minus 2. And for this one, when x equals 3, we're going to go with x minus 3. And there's our equation. However, I'm not nice, and that's not expanded out, so I want you to expand it out. So we're going to do an area model here. So we got x plus 2 times x minus 2. So you get x squared. 2x, negative 2x, and negative 4. So x squared minus 4 is what it simplifies to. And take it times x minus 3. Could you have multiplied the last two first? Of course. It doesn't matter the order. So we've got to do another area model. So we're going to take x squared minus 4 times x minus 3. So we get x cubed minus 4x minus 3x squared plus 12. So we got x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 plus 12 plus 12 equals y. And there's your polynomial equation. Notice it said up here that the degree would be 3 and our exponent's highest exponent is 3. 